Yards across America are filled with old stuff piled up everywhere. My job is to sort through the rubble and uncover the hidden treasures of the yard sale. I sort through the trash and turn crap into cash. Hi, this is Mike and welcome to Pickin' Vegas. This is a show about stuff I find at local yard sales, estate sales, sometimes storage units and other places. Fix up and then resell for a profit sometimes. This week is the first week after COVID-19 we were able to go and hit any yard sales at all really and finally buy some stuff. So everything behind me is what we bought this weekend and we're going to go one by one through the things and why we bought them and tell a little story and uh, we'll make some videos later about the things that need work or need repair and we'll go into a little more detail on those in another episode. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start at the table. We're gonna start with this lovely VCR. I bought this for five bucks, um, mostly because it's in really good condition and it's a very early VCR. One interesting thing about this item is that it actually has the channel changers for your television on it, which is pretty interesting. So at five bucks, it's a little bit of a risk, but if it uh, all goes well and it works, we might see 40, 50 bucks out of that item. These items in the back here are generally things I buy for my antique store, low dollar things, uh, iconic names, Walking Dead, Teenage Mut Mutant Ninja Turtles, Marvel Comics, can't go wrong with that stuff. Uh, five bucks for these, buck for that. That'll sell for eight, probably five, and probably around ten. Uh, next, we got old books. Uh, these were mixed in with a bunch of new books. They date from the 30s into the 50s, and uh, that one into the 60s. At 50 cents each, I've already researched a bunch of these. We got 10 bucks, eight bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, and that one I didn't price yet. Next, we got a nice collection of uh, karaoke CDs, over 20 CDs in there. A bunch of nice playing cards, uh, all for five bucks. Picked up this Wii Lego game uh, for $1. Picked up the nice little Fitz and Floyd uh, rooster Pretty, pretty good company for holiday stuff, $1. Picked up the uh, Crystal Corvette, pretty interesting item, nice and heavy, $1. My wife liked this, we'll see. <laughs> 25 cents, can't go wrong. Uh, nice little aged brass faucet, 25 cents. Uh, I'm not sure what we paid for this, maybe a dollar, it was a bundle. Next on the list is the uh, Halo Warthog. Pretty good find here, great shape, five bucks. Uh, next on the list, felt hat, Dobbs Fifth Avenue. One dollar, probably worth 20 bucks or so. Then we have the Marlboro Unlimited Canteen. For those of you that didn't smoke, back in the day you would get money or credit that you could spend in the uh, Marlboro store or Camel Bucks if you were a Camel smoker. So anything like this has got some collectability to it. Again, paid one dollar, probably worth around ten bucks. Next is this interesting Chinese set. This is kind of a tourist item you would get in China if you were at the tomb of Emperor Xi of the Qin Dynasty. Neat little items, got some age to it. Uh, not terribly valuable, so I paid $14, uh, probably get about $25 for it. Again, that's an antique store kind of item, not really an eBay kind of thing. So, moving over here, I normally don't buy a lot of the uh, pallet sales, but I do stop and look every now and then, and I did find some interesting items this time. One was this cool electric skateboard. Came with a charger, but no controller, so it's going to... Uh, have to get a new controller and test it out and see if we made some money but I got it for $25 it was over $500 new so we definitely got some big money potential in there the bust however was the cool computer gaming keyboard that not only does it not work it's missing the wireless pieces that make it work so at 10 bucks total loss next up the WWF wrestling ring 25 cents seems like a weird item to buy but I actually have a bunch of those wrestlers so it'll make a nice little bundle for somebody eventually and finally the rest of this stuff was all bought at once um, this is a whole collection of late 60s and mid 70s toys 
So we got three Big Jim vehicles, and this is Big Jim himself. Big Jim was very popular in the 70s. You can see this is a GI Joe, probably from the 60s. That Big Jim really wasn't very big, <laughs> so uh, but still very collectible. He's used and not terribly valuable or anything, but the vehicles definitely have some value. Then there was a variety of other things. This again is some 1960s G.I. Joe clothes. Um, G.I. Joe. This is more mid-70s G.I. Joe. This is actually Atomic Man. Looks kind of like the Bionic Man, but he's not. So and he's a little busted up. Speaking of the Bionic Man, here's his outfit. He's missing though. But there's his outfit and actually is probably worth 10 bucks. And the rest of these guys are all the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger himself is, looks like he got a, had a rough night. Um, the rest of the guys though are in pretty good shape. And then these final items here are all 1960s space toys. We got Billy Blastoff vehicles and uh, Major Matt Mason, I believe is this guy. I haven't looked this guy's name up yet. But they definitely have some collectability. Again, they're not in really great shape, but I also didn't pay much for them either. So we have this painting we picked up, um, beautifully framed, nice subject matter. Uh, I'm not sure if we paid three dollars or five dollars, but it sure wasn't much. Um, it's even got a certificate of authenticity on the back that it's a real oil painting. So. With a little research, we did find this artist has sold for around $100 for something like this, so it's definitely got some potential. And then this cool little duck box. Normally I wouldn't buy something like this, but this one's interesting in that it's a card box and a rifle stock. It does have a marking and a label here that I'll have to research and figure out who made it. Again, not terribly valuable, but cool item. It'll clean up nice, great for the antique store. All right, so first up is the VCR from last week. This is a top load VCR. Pretty early, pretty maybe 1980s, had the channel changers, it was a nice shape. Turns out, doesn't even turn on, so <laughs> total loss. I did take the time to pull the back off and see if it was a fuse or something like that, but unfortunately, this one's dead on arrival, and uh, we're gonna call this a loss, and ship it on to Goodwill or somewhere else where somebody maybe can use some parts off of it. And next, this was a kind of a surprise here. We got this for five bucks. This is a Halo Warthog. Uh, this is actually kind of a neat piece as this is the larger one that allows the McFarland figures can actually fit in it. Um, made in 2010, so not super old or anything, but surprisingly, these sell on eBay really really well for 50 to 80 bucks so uh, I paid five dollars this is gonna go on to eBay where hopefully we'll turn a nice little profit on it and we have the set of Marvel glasses I wouldn't thought these would be very valuable but apparently they're quite collectible and sets like this can sell for 20 to 30 dollars on eBay plus the shipping so I may or may not put them on there uh, I'll have to do a little more looking around to see if that's worth it they may just end up in the antique store uh, just for s simplicity, but uh, either way, it turned out to be a really good find. Paid three dollars for them. And next up, we had the little glass Corvette. Paid just one dollar for this. Didn't really think much of it. Just it was kind of neat. But after some research on eBay, this is actually a Franklin Mint item, and was made in West Germany. Uh, again, it sells really good, and it should be twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. I think it was a great investment at one dollar. So. That one is also going off to eBay. And these are the Big Jim vehicles. I did a, some basic research on these. Uh, all three are in pretty good physical shape. Uh, I don't think any of them have ever had a bath, so I will be giving them their very first baths, which will make all of them look a little nicer. But uh, all three did turn out to be in pretty good shape. All of them are probably worth around 30 to 50 bucks a piece, give or take a little here and there. But uh, good investment. I spent $50 for the three. I can see they'll easily double that, so not too bad. Probably good antique store items is just shipping these is big boxes, going to be expensive. Probably easier if somebody just pick it up, see what they're getting, and walk off with it. Hi, my name is Joe. G.I. Joe. You think you know me, but you don't know me. 
I got a couple tricks I want to show you about G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, when he's old, is marked on his butt with a patent pending. And all of them do say 1964. That does not mean G.I. Joe is from 1964. Even if he has the hair, even if he has the voice thing, he's old, but he's not the right kind of old. And the way you tell that is if you flip G.I. Joe over, please cooperate, Joe. It's not going to hurt. And we look on his right buttocks, there are markings here. There say copyright 1964, and if you're lucky it says patent pending, and if you're not as lucky it says patent number 3789 whatever. You need patent pending for G.I. Joe to be old. If he doesn't say patent pending, he's not super old. He doesn't mean he's not valuable, just means he's not the original run of G.I. Joe. So now you got your G.I. Joe trick, even though this one didn't turn out for me to be anything probably more than about 10 bucks. Uh, he did turn out to be a good lesson for all of us on which G.I. Joes are valuable and which G.I. Joes are, well, not as valuable. And then here's the oil painting we found. This is a, a real oil painting, and one way to tell that is just simply by touching it. When you touch it, you should be able to feel the different stuff. I can feel the chimney and the roof line and the people, and that tells me that it's most likely a real oil painting. Uh, if it was a, a lithograph or a print, this would just be flat and smooth. So that's a quick way to tell. Uh, and on this particular painting, it is signed K. Burt. We did find out this artist in something similar is worth around $100. I expect about $40 to $60 locally for it. All right, and now the electric skateboard. I was able to spend a little time doing some research, and I was able to access this panel right here and remove it to see if possibly there was a replaceable receiver similar to what a radio controlled car would use that I could replace it with a new controller. Unfortunately uh, in this particular skateboard that receiver for the remote control is integrated into the electronics so I am going to have to try to locate a factory vocal controller that will work with this. From what I see, this is a V2 board. Both the V1 and V2 boards do use the same controller, so now it will just be a matter of trying to find one. And so far, it doesn't look like anything easy to find, so it's going to take a little, a little extra effort on my part to see if I can figure out how to get one of these things. Once I do get that, we'll, we'll do a follow-up video where we can finally charge it and turn it on and see if she works. So uh, this is a to be continued item and we'll see in the future how it turns out. And now to total things up. So everything on the table and the ground added up to right around $165 we spent. I expect the resale prices of all these items added up to hit around $500 and as much as $800 if that skateboard does end up working. So that wraps up this first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We got a whole brand new pile of stuff coming and more stories and I'll do follow-ups and anything else that comes along interesting. I am going to do some other training videos if you want to learn how to research things on eBay or maybe sell something on Facebook or Craigslist. I'll show you all the basics and what to do and what not to do. Just nice simple things to keep you and your collecting hobby moving forward. So, I'll see you with a brand new pile next week.